Okay, before starting uh, my lecture, I would like to uh, give a few personal remarks. <laughs> so I first met uh, Professor Liu Yulizi uh, 17 years ago in Tsinghua University, uh, Beijing, China. So at that moment, I was an undergraduate student, and uh, he gave a course on uh, algebraic geometry. And uh, that opened uh, the door of uh, <laughs> modern arithmetic uh, algebraic geometry to me. Okay, that was a fantastic experience. And after that, I, uh, with the help of him and also other French professors, such as uh, Jean-Marc Fondin, Michel Hello, I went to France to have my PhD. So Luc uh, Ulysse <laughs> played a special important role <laughs> in my mathematical career. Uh, and after that, uh, he has al always been a good teacher in mathematics for me, and uh, also in music, <laughs> in French language, <laughs> and uh, many other things. So uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to be able to give a lecture in this conference, and uh, uh, I also ex want to express my sincere gratitude to him. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the title of my talk is Cohomology of Prismatic Crystals. Uh, let me start with recording uh, some basic notions on prismatic sites. Okay, um, so I will fix a prime number, P. Mm. So rec record that a prism uh, for me, is uh, is a pair AI. So where uh, A is a, uh, uh, is a delta ZP algebra. So uh, here, the de de delta algebra just means that, um, roughly speaking, you have a lift of Frobenius and morphism on A. Okay, so. Basically means that phi x equals to x to the p, p times delta x uh, is a lift of Frobenius. So delta will have to satisfy some special properties uh, according to this condition. Uh, and i is, um, um, is a locally principal ideal. So, and locally generated by so-called undistinguished element generated by a long zero divisor D, say, uh, with delta D invertible. Okay. Um, uh, okay, there is uh, one more condition. Uh, so uh, we should require that uh, A is well derived uh, P uh, I complete. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> if you <laughs> are not familiar with derived completion, so you can forget about this word because for our case. Uh, the derived completion is the same as uh, pi adequately complete. Okay, uh, so at least for bounded prism, uh, a prism ai is bounded. I think you need the p belongs to uh, uh, i plus phi of i. Uh, but I mean, this condition will imply that. No. no? Uh, no, 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 I think so. Yeah, if you apply phi to, to the d, then you get d to the p, and uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's called bounded. So if a i, a modulo i has bounded p power torsion. Okay, so. Uh, I will copy the <laughs> examples in the paper <laughs> uh, of uh, Bart Schulze. So the basic examples that we should keep in mind is the following. So 
the first example is the uh, crystalline prism appearing in, uh, in the talk of uh, Professor August in, on Monday. So you can take AI to be WK, and the ideal generated by P is OK. Here is a perfect few uh, in characteristic P. Um, OK, the second example uh, is the favorite for the people working in periodic Hodge theory. Uh, so AI, you can take AI to be A inf. Uh, and this guy is take to be P minus equal P. OK, so where A inf is, uh, so according to Schwartz's notation, is the weight vector of OCP flat. So here, OCP flat. The definition is the uh, uh, OCP modulo P, inverse limit OCP modulo P, uh, with transition map given by the Frobenius. OK, and the, the P underline is the element uh, P and P power square. So on in OCP flat. Right. OK, so this is a, a second example. Uh, well, also this uh, is the third one. Uh, OK, so this is a borrow a casing example. You. Uh, and I is, is generated by an uh, Eisenstein polynomial. Oh. OK, so in, in the previous two examples, there are lecture I mean, delta structures. It's a because there is some shadow. Ah, right. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. OK. Uh, and here you, you give the uh, delta structure with uh, delta u equals to 0. Here, eu is uh, Eisenstein polynomial. So this is the way you kiss As example. OK. Uh, right, there is a fourth example, maybe. A is zp minus 1. Um, and with the delta structure, delta q equals to zero and uh, i is generated by the q analog of, of p so here by definition is q to the power of p minus one p minus one so uh, when when q equals to one then this is just uh, just the p okay um, okay so this is the definition of prism and the bounded prism uh, by the way all these these examples are bounded prism. So, uh, the definition of Bart Schulze uh, of prismatic set is the following. So you have to fix a, well, I will consider just the relative prismatic set. So let's fix a bounded prism. Um, and x be a smooth um, periodic formal scheme. Periodic formal scheme over A modulo i. Uh, so here I equip with uh, equip AI with the lateral mm, periodic topology. Uh, then the prismatic side. Uh, which is due to x slash a prism uh, consists of following data. Uh, first of all, the objects uh, are given by bounded prism. Called b uh, i b well, over a i. Uh, and together with uh, a diagram like this, so B modulo uh, IB plus immersion respect F over respect A. 
here it's uh, x subtract a over i. Well, uh, right. So let's uh, commit the diagram like this. Um, and secondly, the covering that I consider is the uh, faithfully flat map. So I map f. Uh, uh, okay, so it's uh, slightly <laughs> complicated to uh, 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 another object called the spectra FC. Uh, oh, sorry, C, I C X is a cover. Is a covering for this site. Uh, if the underlying morphism of of delta rings from B to C is so called PI completely faithfully flat, so we'll consider the flat cover. The, the, map, the map from spoof B to spoof A corresponds to a mapping of delta rings from A to B, right? Yes, this this is uh, compatible with delta structure, right? With delta. Right. So if this looks so like. Uh, ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the annoying part. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so I <laughs> really want this, right? Yeah, so in the case where the the i is generated by p. This gives something like the what August explained in his lecture. Is it? Yes. It's es essentially this. Yes, I think so. But, but here, the point is yeah. to consider this a flat yeah. topology. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so this is the definition of prismatic site. Uh, It just means a uh, faithfully flat modulo uh, uh, power of pi. Uh, okay, so this, uh, yeah, it's a good question. So uh, this uh, completely faithfully flat means that if you take the derived tensor, pi, uh, e, this guy is concentrated in degree zero. Zero and is a faithfully flat V modulo PI module. Okay, right. Uh, okay, so for the Clodendiac, I will denote the associated topos by Q the associated topos. Okay, um, there are two. Uh, structure sheaf on this uh, site. Okay. All uh, right. Uh, the first uh, of prism sheaf send an object like B, uh, B module I B X uh, to B. Uh, the second one I will consider is. O prism bar, uh, which the send such an object to B modulo IB. Okay. Um, so if they use only bounded prisms, why do they have to define unbounded? So I mean, this is just for some technical. Right. Uh, yes, but for the moment, I, I haven't considered any uh, unbounded prism. I don't know much about it. No, but in the in the pack, so uh, so so in the condition of. Uh, of prisons, there is this derived PI complete, but in the bounded case, it is simpler. Yeah, yes, yes. 
Yes. So yes. The, in their work, where do, do they need to go through some unbounded prisms in some here? Or is it just for nice uh, generality of the final unbounded ones? Or is it? Do the, okay, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so <laughs> let me give the definition of uh, 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 prism. In my experience, uh, pri in, my, in my own experience, when you when you try to do cell operations by take fiber products, it's, things become unbounded sometimes. Uh -huh. So you have to be careful. Okay. Uh, okay. So, sorry. Uh, for me, an O prism crystal or respectively an uh, old prism bar crystal uh, is a shift uh, CF of uh, old, uh, old prism modules or respectively uh, old prism bar modules uh, such that uh, for each object, mm, well, say, well, I will maybe, uh, okay. The I X uh, for each object in here. Uh, its valuation, well, I will just denote it by FB. Uh, it's, its value, well, sorry, is, uh, um, IP completely uh, flat um, and IP uh, complete module, uh, complete B module. Okay, so in the, in the case of O bar module, I, I would just require this to be uh, P, P completely flat and uh, P completely flat and uh, periodically complete you module everything by I, okay, module. So when you say IP complete, is it the same as derived complete in this case or not the same? It's the same as uh, de derived completion. I mean, it's, th it's the same as IP articularly complete in the classical sense and also in the derived sense. In this case, these two notions coincide. So that's why I just simplified like this. Concentrated degree zero. Yes. Maybe I is kind of a non-zero divisor, and so it's supplies to track modulo I, and then precaution is bounded. Uh, OK, OK. So modulo I is, and then because uh, these this two notions coincide. OK. So there's no. No, no difference to consider derived completion or the euro completion. Sorry. Ah. That's bad. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so anyway, the second condition is for any morphism of a prism, uh, like, a, like above. Uh, I will just say spec to, to spec to B, maybe pair. Okay, so I don't know for any morphism. Okay, morphism in this. So I mean, <laughs> I should write completely like like those, but it's too deep, too too complicated. So for any morphism F. I require that F star F B by definition is F B completed tensor over B with C. Uh, this transition map to F C is isomorphism. Uh, this is uh, in the case of O pre crystal. In the case of O Chris bar crystal, uh, you have something similar. But in that case, you were Tensor just over B modulo I. There is modulo I. Let's see. Okay. 
Yes, they are the complete tensor product, well, both in the euro sense or in the <laughs> derived sense. In the euro sense or the derived sense. Because we, we impose the flat list condition, then these two notions coincide. Well, it's a lot of completely trivial, but. but OK, because you can define the universal property to derive from play. OK, OK. I mean, uh, strictly speaking, you have to uh, take the derived tensor first and the derived completion. And then you will find that in this case, the derived completion is concentrated in degree zero and coincide with the euro completion. So, which completion? Derived completion. Coincide with? with the euro completion. The euro completion. Usually. Usually. The classical completion, I mean. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, here, so I insisted to work with uh, a flat object. Uh, this is because uh, for flat objects, uh, we we're going to we have FPQC descent for such objects. Okay, so I flat this assumption. Um, is is in order to use uh, is for FPQC descent in this setup. Um, okay, so from now on, I will suppose. So I, I was hoping that was true more generally. But you think flat, the flatness assumption, without the flatness assumption, the this, set this doesn't hold? Uh, I don't know whether it, it holds a lot. At least I don't, cannot prove it. <laughs> the problem is, you, if you take the uh, completion or inverse limit, this is not an uh, exact factor. So. Yeah, uh, even R limited does not work so well, so you should really take the derived completion and, s and so on. So, so you mean FPQ descent, descent in the sense of P completely flat maps? Right. Yeah, at least over a base of a prism. No, but, the, yeah, but then, so you have classical FPQ descent modulo powers of... Yeah, yes, exactly. And then you want to take some inverse limit. Yeah, yes, you want to get the FPQ descent, descent for flat objects, uh, for, for completed objects. But in general, there is this problem of uh, exactly of uh, take inverse limit. Uh, how, how is this a problem? I mean, the R limit would be <coughs> like if your objects are derived complete, then uh, you, you would you know, just be able to check modular powers. It looks like that. Uh, it, well, here you are, you are working with the derived notions, but since you usually your conditions are equivalent to more classical ones. Yes. Yeah, it looks like that there is no problem with. But, but, uh, but we want to really work with a module, not, not an object in the derived category. You it's see. a module, yeah. So if you have. <laughs> if you just take the derived completion, then you have to take somehow H0. And then this H0 is not exact anymore. I mean, if you want, want to come back to the a concrete module, right? instead of something in the derived category. For modules, so uh, I get uh, uh, maybe uh, Yeah, maybe we can discuss later. This okay, is slightly yeah, technical. Yeah. OK. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, uh, there's a question from Shiko. So she asks if uh, there's no uh, crystal function. Huh? Sorry, what's, what's, what's the question? I mean, you no, no question. Crystal question is, is there no crystal assumption? Crystal assumption. At least isomorphisms. I mean, I mean, this is for any morphism. This transition map is as morphism is a crystal property, the euro crystal property. I, mm -hmm. I don't understand what's. Uh, so assume P is A is P torsion free. Okay. Uh, okay, now I can state my main theorem. Uh, okay, so theorem A, this is the finiteness result uh, in the abstract. So assume X is proper uh, and also <laughs> always smooth as zero of relative dimension. 
n say over uh, a modulo i. Uh, so let f be uh, O prism crystal. Uh, well, you need also some <laughs> a finite assumption, locally free of finite rank. Uh, then, if you take the prismatic cohomology of this crystal, this guy is a, is a perfect complex. of A modules uh, concentrated in degrees 0 to n. Well, result of too much surprise, huh? <laughs> OK, moreover, uh, this prismatic crystal commutes with arbitrary base change in A. Uh, OK, moreover, if, uh, say, A i to B i b, is a map of prisms, a bounded prism, sorry, um, then um, the natural base change map from the cohomology of f over x derived the tensor uh, with b. I think this is over A. Uh, is, uh, uh, so, so you have the base change x to uh, B modulo IB. So I just write it as XB. So the notation is self evident. And also, you have to restrict your crystal to, to this prismatic set. OK, I mean, you, you take the pro back, but not just the. In a big prismatic set, this is restriction. But if we may degree zero to n means in the uh, uh, perfect amplitude there, or uh, it's uh, locally represented by a perfect complex in degree zero to n. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ah. okay. So this is the main theorem. Ah. Okay. So is it a theory here? No. 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 No? What? No? No, it's not necessary, no theory. Yeah, so this is like the finiteness theorem for crystalline cohomology. Right, right, okay. Uh, where's the next page? Uh, okay, so, uh, so this is the first uh, theorem. And uh, now to state, so this theorem is a consequence of a corresponding theorem for O, o bar crystals. OK, so to actually for O bar crystals, we can see something more. So let's consider uh, the natural projection from the prismatic set of x to the etotopos. So if you have a shift here, the push forward to an, obje to an object in the etal side is given by uh, the prismatic cohomology of f respect to u, in some sense. Okay, um, okay theorem b says the following. Uh, uh, so let's say f will now be an uh, O bar crystal. Uh, or still locally free of finite type, a finite rank. Um, then our new F is actually a perfect complex, perfect complex. Uh, of Ox modules uh, in degree uh, zero n. Well, also a degree <laughs> perfect amplitude. <coughs> and also comes with arbitrary base change. 
um, with um, arbitrary uh, base change in, in A. OK? So it's clear that <laughs> theorem B will imply theorem A uh, because uh, so if uh, A, F is an O, 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 o crystal, oh, sorry, O crystal, then of course its reduction modulo I is an O bar crystal. So if you take a co prismatic cohomology of F and tensor with I, then it's uh, kind of isomorphic to uh, over I prism. And Right, and this guy is going to be x a tau of r nu. Right. Right. So f is all you will just get the, the uncomplex of the special mm -hmm. uh, finder. Then, then r nu f is a perfect complex in degree zero n. Yeah, mm -hmm. but if f is uh, just uh, over, then you will get uh, the uncomplex then. The RAM complex, uh, r not exactly the RAM complex. Actually, uh, F or F or, uh, not exactly. It's a the Hodge complex. No. Zero zeros. It's just the Hodge complex. You know. uh, complex. In general, it's going to be Hig uh, Higgs complex. Yeah, yeah, it's a Higgs com complex. I, I will explain that later. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> if you apply this, you get uh, the re result. Uh, a theorem A. Uh, okay. So, uh, as remarked. So actually, we were given more concrete local description. Uh, so uh, give a, a local description of this R new uh, F. Oh, well, well, it depends on the location. Well, then maybe it's better to delete a bar <laughs> to distinguish to an F. Uh, of in terms of Higgs modules. Higgs modules, right. Okay. Um, so, so far for any, any questions? Good. Uh, uh, for the moment, <laughs> I don't use box time <laughs> operators yet. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I will just use these two boards. <laughs> oh, maybe keep the statement of theorem for the moment. Okay, so let's come to the second part, local description. Um, um, so in this part, I will consider just some a fine object, so such that R admits a lift, say R frame over A, um, uh, that is a tau. over uh, A modulo I uh, converging power series in M variables. Uh, oh, sorry, it's not A, it's just A. Okay, so you have R3. Everything is a phone model. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe IP completely flat, uh, completely etal. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so now here you can choose any any delta structure you, you like <laughs> to extend the natural delta, stru uh, delta structure on A. So for instance, you can take a T equals to zero or delta equals just with ti and so on. So, voilà. yeah. 
And then this uh, delta structure extends uniquely to, to, to R frame. So this is a lemma in the paper of uh, Bart Schwarzer. Uh, OK, so now you have a lift of uh, uh, x and equipped with a delta structure. The assumption here is just that uh, the right, I mean, that there is this kind of coordinates uh, that uh, a mod i with this t1, tn goes by the tau map, be completely a tau map. Yes, yes. Because I suppose r is smooth over the base. So it, at least uh, etologically, there exists such coordinate. Okay, and then the left exists because you can just. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, a simple lemma, but uh, which is crucial for our discussion, is that um, such a lift defines an object in the prismatic site. So, this, uh, when you modulo i, this is just x, right? Um, this object is actually a cover, well, a flat cover. Huh? Uh, of the final object uh, in this prismatic purpose. Uh, well, the, the, the proof is actually simple, <laughs> just one word. Uh, okay, for any object u in this prismatic site, what, what you have to check is that u the product of u with x frame exists and is a cover of, of u. I mean, it's a flat cover of u. OK. Um, now, uh, I will have to consider some some simplicial object or <laughs> uh, well it's well. so for any n greater than zero um, let me denote r frame n plus one to be the the delta envelope of n plus one copies of R frame subject to R. Okay, so you jump. geometrically you take the diagonal embedding of x into uh, n plus one copies of product of R frame. Okay, so this is delta envelope. Okay. Um. Yeah, this defines an object uh, in the prismatic site. Uh, so that's R frame n plus one, uh, right? So the delta envelope com compatible with the previous, uh, with the delta on the all the. Uh, right, 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 right. So uh, this delta on the factors does not uh, define uniquely a delta. I, I may, maybe I'm confused. Uh, no, so so at, at each copy you have a delta structure, uh, and there is a canonical delta structure on the tensor product. So delta envelope, not prismatic envelope. Uh, ah, sorry, sorry, prismatic envelope. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Uh, prismatic envelope. Sorry. Uh, so <laughs> uh, it's difficult to explain. So, so you, 
uh, you have a, such an idea, uh, and it's generated by some regular sequence. Uh, well, say xr, and then uh, somehow you take, uh, well, you suppose di is generated by one element d. So you, you have to first of all do some blow up. So you add such elements and also all the deltas of such elements. That's uh, roughly the <laughs> prismatic envelope. OK, oh, so not R, but any, any K. Oh. So this guy is an, op is an object in the prismatic side. Actually, it's just uh, uh, the n plus 1 uh, product copy photo um, product of x squared. So you, you get uh, some tissue object, right? So x, zero, x frame 0 is just x frame. And then you have two projections, p1, p2. Uh, you have 1, 2, OK, p1, 2, p1, 3, p2, 3. Uh, OK, I have 15 minutes. So <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, uh, so let M be uh, P completely uh, flat and um, uh, P periodically complete. I just take P complete object. P R, R module, right? Um, uh, prismatic stratification on, uh, on M, well, relative to the base, okay, is an isomorphism epsilon, uh, so R, fra R frame 1 modulo I, this is a tensor, uh, P2. Yeah. One modulo i. Okay, so it's a pull back to this object huh? uh, such that the usual co cycle condition is satisfied. Okay, so this forms naturally a category. I would denote a start. Uh, okay, so what is my notation? O bar x frame. So it's a category of such pairs. Okay. Then as usual, you have a description of O bar crystals in terms of stratification. Mm. OK, so th there exists an evaluation functor from the category of O bar crystals to the category of stratifications over X frame. Uh, well, uh, the proposition is this evaluation factor is actually a equivalence of categories. Okay, uh, and there exists also a version for O, o crystals. So, um, well, uh, let's just say one word for. <laughs> For the proof, uh, the essential point is the FPQC descent in this setup. Okay. Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, so this is why we need the flat disk assumption. Um, okay, so sim similar. Uh, 
I should say similar ideas appears in the work of uh, Shatsi Ma, uh, Ma Matthew. Okay, <laughs> not plans of work to work on. It's called uh, P Christ Q crystals and Q connections. It's uh, in a similar setup. Okay. So, yeah, actually, I, I got inspired by his paper. Uh, okay, so this is stratification. Um, uh, Some work also by Grohl, Steam, and uh, ah, right, right. Yes, there's also the work of Grohl, and there's two, and Kiros. Uh, I think it's like this. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I would, would consider then uh, relate this stratification to uh, Higgs modules. Um, so I, well, maybe for many people it's uh, just a flat Higgs module. Higgs module uh, R is a um, P completely flat. And, uh, and the periodically complete R module, module M, uh, together with uh, morphism th theta from M to omega 1. So here you may <laughs> consider just <laughs> the completed omega 1. So anyway. Hmm. Well, since uh, everything is not necessarily finite type, so you need to take completion uh, such that uh, theta theta wedge equals to zero. Okay, um, and I will denote Higgs uh, R hat uh, to be uh, the category of Higgs field such that which is topologically quasi-lipotent. Just ignore it. So later on, we will just work with the case where i is generated by one element. So <laughs> the twist to disappear. But you are right. Canonically, it should be some twist there. But I haven't figured out how to define canonically such an object. So for the moment, I choose to ignore it. So C is assume. Uh, I is generated by one element. Then, uh, first of all, there exists an equivalence of categories uh, between the uh, O bar stratification over X free with uh, this category of topologically quasi lipotent Higgs modules over R. Uh, and so if you combine this, proposi uh, this, this statement with the previous proposition, you get an equivalence of uh, categories between the O bar crystals uh, with the Higgs field, with the category of, of Higgs modules. OK? Uh, so maybe just write it here. Uh, right, OK. So now let's take a take a crystal. Mm. Mm. Okay, 
I say it's with associate fix module. And data then we have a uh, isomorphism which computes R U of F in terms of uh, the drama complex associated to this Higgs module. So let's just write M tensor with uh, with omegas, right? That is usually take. Okay, so this imply directly the theorem B, which just says that R nu is a perfect complex. So this locally, <laughs> you can write this complex in this way, so. This is the Durham complex defined by the theta. Yes, but uh, here theta is, is, is R linear, so it's yeah, just, it's a linear yeah, linear version of okay. Durham. Now, when you change the generator of I, can you describe what happens to this uh, equivalence, or is it comp Uh, <laughs> generator. Uh, no, I haven't considered, yes. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, oh, okay. I s uh, yeah, if you have two generators of I, I think it doesn't matter, so. It, uh, you, you just twist, yeah, as, as I, I might have said, you just twist the connection by the, the ratio of these two generators, I think. Ah, okay, but, uh, but then you can glue, if you have this and you can glue. So but it's by I, but I squared. Okay, but for, for, for I, uh, the gluing is not so. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can glue, right? But it's a risky, just, just formal the risky localization. Right, right. Unless there is some. Co some yeah, the gluing for, for, for the problem I is simple, I think. The real problem is how to glue this equivalence of categories uh, for different choices of liftings. So you see, in the first state, statement, this category and this category, uh, these two categories are independent of the lift. Yeah? Yes. But then, in, in order to establish such equivalence, you need to choose a lift. So this g gives rise to the natural question is whether it's possible to glue this equivalence. No, but you say that the equivalence of categories is independent of the lift, is a well-defined. I mean, the category itself is independent of the lift, but in order to e establish the equivalence, you have to use a lift. But when you change the lift, the equivalence is this is remains canonically isomorphic to the previous no. one? No. No? No. 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 So, but no. even if it's isomorphic, is it uniquely? How, how you identify that? So. Mm -hmm. But ah, Suji, no. has, Suji has a, a category no. of Higgs crystal. Yes, yes. He should be even more appropriate to this context. Uh, She's uh, uh, which in fact inspired the Oyaman, the, the shoe. Uh -huh. So in some sense, this should be uh, uh, more appropriate for this context. Yes. Uh, you mean? You, you, you mean the lotion of uh, Higgs modules in, in, in Higgs crystals? In some sense, it all the lift Right, but uh, but in the in this setup, uh, there's low delta structure. Yes, but you have to enrich it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, in my opinion, the version with delta structure is the correct one, <laughs> because yeah. I mean, you will see why it's okay. correct. Uh, one. Sorry, uh, ex ex excuse uh, me. Uh, uh, there are two two questions from Shifo. Uh huh. So first one is, is there a, is there a version of the same C for all the data crystal? Oh. And the next question is, is there a version of the same C for the uh, lift uh, X square uh, replaced by a regular Uh No, the, I I don't ca consider liftings over just over uh, I square. Uh, I I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, square is no. X, X, X frame. Y yes, yes, I mean, instead of lifting, you embed in some yeah, I mean, I did a lifting to, to or A, not just a modulo I square. Okay, th does that answer your question? 
the, is the second question. I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand the first question. Can, can you repeat? First question is, do you have something with O, not with O bar? Ah, with O? Uh, not yet. <laughs> okay, but, but I think Moro and Tsuchi uh, had a version for, for O crystals in, in, a, in a special case with uh, so-called the Q prism, yes. uh, the, the fourth example, or the fourth and the second example that I gave. Um, okay, so this the advantage of this theorem is it works for all crystals. Yeah, yeah and the second question oh, was whether, okay. I think it was whether instead of a lifting, you, you embed something. It something smooth. Ah, yes, I think that's, that's still possible. Yeah, yeah. But well, I, can, I, can, I can say something about that in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the case of crystal physics, which is, yes, you, you can, uh, if you take an embedding, uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this now. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we we'll discuss it just after, okay? Okay, so <laughs> maybe <laughs> I just finish my talk <laughs> with one more key name, which explains roughly why this is true. <laughs> So actually, there exists an uh, isomorphism between R frame 1 modulo i. So R frame 1, <laughs> the, the prismatic envelope of the diagonal embedding is quite complicated, in, at least in general case. In the, pris in the, crist in the crystalline case, it's, it's relatively simple. That's what explained by Professor August Armandi. But in general, I think it's quite complicated. But however, when you model i, it's isomorphic to something quite familiar. So it's just the PD uh, divided power polynomial run over R and then take periodic completion. Okay. And right, there, there are two, two maps, right? So the two maps from R to this guy. Uh, well, uh, actually coincide with the natural, natural inclusion. Uh, coincide with the natural inclusion. So it's a little bit of word, weird <laughs> to have two <laughs> identical map, but that's true. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Uh, I think I have no time. Uh, yeah, I think I should just stop here. Right. Okay. So are there yeah, yeah, questions? Uh, from, uh, from the Zoom? So, Arthur has a question. Uh, no, okay. just a, 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 a question. Here. Okay. I have just a very quick okay. question. So, uh, um, doesn't it phi appear uh, in this uh, equivalence? Uh, phi? Uh, be between, yes. Uh, you mean the Frobenius? Yes. Uh, Oh no. Uh, usually uh, there is some, some uh, Cartier thing. Uh, 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 phi uh, appears uh, in the proof. Uh, appear in the proof. <laughs> yeah, in, in the proof. For example, if you yes. want to prove such things, okay, th what are those variables? Uh, those are variables i, xi, corresponds to something. I think the notation is self evident, right? Uh, divided by, by d. Right, okay. And then when you try to prove such kind of things, the essential point is to prove that the phi of xi and also all the deltas are contained in the ideal generated by, uh, by d, right? <laughs> but also in the, in the statement, in the equivalence, is there are some phi that you, you didn't define really. You said there exists some equivalence. But, uh, uh, where? Here? No, above. Above. Is evaluation is, is well defined. Yeah, okay, so it's canonically defined. Uh, yes, I, I was 
not so precise here. But, but in the, in the classically, in the, the Hochstedt comparison theorem, there is some uh, some phi which appears. You yeah, but he fixed the lifting with the flow rate. Mm -hmm. He fixed already. Yeah. yeah. And it works with yeah, every. It's zero, it's zero, they're complex, and then H1, H2, and then the, there's a box time. You said that you didn't. Uh, yes. I mean, I deduce the this equivalence starting from here. Appear there, but not in this uh, setup, maybe. Maybe not in this setup. I mean, it, it appears in the proof, but uh, a file is important <laughs> to get this. And <laughs> okay. What was the meaning of the word crystal in prison? Uh, crystal in prison? Maybe you I didn't make them yourself. That's the case, R equals P. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the crystal in prism, I equals P. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe one more word. The, the same, uh, same kind of argument for the K-Nema allows to prove that if we are in the crystal in case, then there is an isomorphism of, of uh, uh, R square 1. It's just isomorphic to this. The same proof, I think. Not only modulo i, but uh, the whole <laughs> r square one is isomorphic to this this guy. So, any uh, application corollary of this uh, general theorem to uh, the examples you, you mentioned before? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, corollaries, I think it's uh, finally a theorem that I stated, but uh, 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 yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a comment. So, uh, in some sense, you did not discuss in this prismatic picture at all the etal uh, realization. Uh -huh. uh, but if you combine with this equivalence, do you see a connection with the periodic Simpson or? So in some sense, ah. you, you should see two connections. One with yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Um, and also the periodic. Right. Uh, yes, that's uh, what explained by uh, Professor August on Monday. Uh, so he did not discuss no, the no, 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 et al. Et al. No, no. but he discussed the connection with Oyama and the shoe. Uh huh. You, you, you want to say ah some connection with a tau side? Uh, uh, with a tau side, I'm not sure. You have some metal sheaf associated. Maybe that's that's already contained in the paper by Moro and Tsuji. They discuss yeah, some generalities on generalized yeah. prismatic crystals or generalized uh, representations. And then, in some sense, the question is, do you have all Higgs? In some sense, your Higgs field satisfies some nil potential. So this is, should correspond to the smallness, maybe, condition. Uh, smallness? Mm, I'm not sure. F f from point of view of proof, <laughs> the quasi impotence condition comes from the, you take the periodic completion. <laughs> Okay. You, you have an, an, uh, a theorem on the direct image, yeah. right? Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have direct image on the prismatic uh, uh, side, and also uh, direct image on the etal uh, side. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, there should be uh, the correspondence uh, should be uh, compatible with the direct image. Mm -hmm. Is it the case? <laughs> I haven't considered a thousand since. Sorry. Uh, yes, one may ask. Uh, whether this equivalence of categories is compatible with push forward and so on. The, the, the periodic object corresponding to direct image of the, your crystal, and then it should be the direct image of the. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, I, any more questions? I have a question from Artu. Yeah. Artu, I, have, I have a comment or question. Uh -huh. Go ahead. So there was a question about what to do to make this more global without working with the lifting. He said work with an embedding. Mm. I, I think that, that what, what I try to do, uh, and it perhaps be adapted in the, to this setting, is show that if you look at the prismatic envelope of X in the embedding, it should be, have a crystal structure. It won't be flat, but, but nevertheless it should still have a crystal structure. In particular, when you're working modulo I, it should have a Higgs field. A locally local Higgs field, and you could describe, I believe, crystals as 
as, as modules equipped with the, uh, modules over this, the structure sheet of this prismatic envelope, together with a, a, a Higgs field, compatible with a Higgs field on this prismatic envelope. I think that should be the equivalence. And then you can use the Higgs complex of, of, of the value of this crystal on this, on this, on this envelope, on, on this prismatic envelope, to calculate the, uh, the, the, the cohomology. But it will be finite because of because of this envelope is really big. So in order to get the finite, you've got to work well with the lifting. So uh, are you thinking of just a variant of the P-Dom complex or P? Uh, what? Uh, well, in this case, it'll be a Higgs complex. It'll be a Higgs complex instead of a P-Dom complex. But uh, is there a variant of this P-Dom thing in this uh, uh, non-crystalline prism, base prism? I don't know. That, that we don't know because, because as you said, yes, this envelope is not for people to calculate. You don't divide there by that. There is a cute, cute add deformation add. of the euro crystal inside, which may give you uh, analog of p drum complex in, in more general, yeah. over more general prism. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, see, his main point is to calculate this, 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 this is the structure sheet of the group one. That's what this R1 module. Module. Yeah, yeah. If you don't divide by eyes, it's very hard to calculate if you don't divide by eyes. Yes. So, uh, if there's no other question, uh, let's thank again uh, the speaker.